the Fed, and by the Fed I'm, I'm referring to the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, um, looked at executive compensation from its unique perspective. It looked at the amount of money involved and concerned whether bleeding of, of, of cash would impact AIG's ability to repay its loan. They looked to see whether the structure had perverse incentives that would encourage executives to take decisions, make decisions that would be not in the best interest of the company and most importantly from the Fed's perspective, inhibit the ability to repay the loan. Treasury, on the other hand, paid scant attention to the executive compensation structure. Other than, than discovering and figuring out who the 50 or so employees that would be subject to its executive compensation uh, restrictions that were included in the November $40 billion TARP bailout, Treasury did little more. As a result, when the March 2009, earlier this year, AIG financial products retention payments came, came through, Treasury didn't know about them until two weeks beforehand. And they didn't know the scope of those, those payments, that they were going to apply not just to essential personnel, but also to non-essential, people who worked in the mail room, in the kitchen, in the file room. Our audit in this concludes that this was a failure. It was a failure of oversight by Treasury which essentially abdicated its role in, in favor of allowing the Federal Reserve, notwithstanding the fact that the Fed had different interests and different concerns in Treasury, as reflected perhaps uh, most clearly by the fact that its agreement with, with AIG included no provisions relating to executive compensation. Our audit also concludes that Secretary Geithner did not find out, did not learn of these bonus payments until just days before they were made. But this, too, is a failure. It was a failure of communications and it was a failure of management.